हरि ओम मैं विजय दांजरे सहायक प्राध्यापक डिग्री कॉलेज ऑफ फिजिकल एजुकेशन अमरावती आज यहाँ उपस्थित सभी अतिथि गुरुजनों का सभी सम्मानित प्रतिनिधि जनों का एवं सभी आदरणीय सभा सदों का अपने और संपूर्ण योग विभाग की ओर से हार्दिक हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूँ आज श्री हनुमान व्यायाम प्रसारक मंडल द्वारा संचालित डिग्री कॉलेज ऑफ फिजिकल एजुकेशन के योग विभाग द्वारा आयोजित आचार्य त्र्यंबक गुरुजी जोशी और डॉक्टर एन वी करबेलकर जी की पावन स्मृति में अंतर्राष्ट्रीय एफ कार्यक्रम का आयोजन किया गया है तथा आज के तृतीय दिवस के द्वितीय सत्र में इफेक्ट ऑफ षटकर्मा ऑन ह्यूमन बॉडी इस विषय पर व्याख्यान के लिए एकत्रित एवं उपस्थित हुए हैं सर्वप्रथम कार्यक्रम की शुरुआत इस सत्र की शुरुआत हम प्रार्थना से करेंगे प्रार्थना के लिए आप सभी नमस्कार मुद्रा में बैठे बैठे जहाँ कहीं भी आप बैठे हो थोड़ा ध्यानात्मक स्थिति में आ जाना है नमस्कार स्थिति आंखें बंद रीट की हड्डी सीधी एवं प्रार्थना मेरे द्वारा कहा जाएगा और आपने मन ही मन दोहराना है ओ सहना सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर करवा तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु विदिशावे ओ शांति 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 हथेलियों का घर्षण आंखें हथेलियों के अंदर ही खोलनी है धीरे धीरे हथेलिया आज इस एफ के तृतीय दिवस के द्वितीय सत्र में जो कि आज का विषय है इफेक्ट ऑफ षटकर्मा ऑन ह्यूमन बॉडी इस विषय पर मार्गदर्शन के लिए हमें या हमारे बीच उपस्थित है श्रीमान डॉक्टर पी एन रोंगे सर मैं आपका शब्द सुनने से हार्दिक हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूँ हरिओम सर जी आगे आज मैं यहाँ माननीय प्राध्यापक एवं चिकित्सक डॉक्टर पी एन रोंगे सर का संक्षिप्त परिचय देने जा रहा हूँ सर आप श्री हवा हनुमान व्यायाम प्रसारक मंडल से विगत कई सालों से जुड़े हुए हैं आपका संस्था के प्रति जो योगदान है एवं कार्य है वह काफी प्रशंसनीय एवं कर्मकुशल है आपकी शैक्षिक विद्वत्ता पर प्रकाश डाला जाए तो आपकी शिक्षा एम बी बी एस डी सी एच नागपुर यूनिवर्सिटी टी वाई एड अमरावती यूनिवर्सिटी अमरावती डब्ल्यू एस सी वाई वर्ल्ड सोसाइटी ऑफ क्लिनिकल योगा फॉर्मर टीचर ऑफ स्पोर्ट्स मेडिसिन संत गाडगे बाबा अमरावती यूनिवर्सिटी अमरावती एंड डी सी पी अमरावती बाद में फॉर्मर टीचर ऑफ डिवाइड एम ए योग शास्त्र पी जी डिवाई टी एट डी सी पी अमरावती आपके कुछ पुस्तकें प्रसिद्ध हुए हैं उनमें से फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ योगा फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ योगा थेरेपी योग दूसरी आवृत्ति योगा प्रमाणे शरीर क्रिया शास्त्र तथा यौगिक सूक्ष्म एवं स्थूल व्यायाम आपका प्रशासनिक कार्य काफी बड़ा है इसमें आप एक्स एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव ऑफिसर एंड एक्स टीचर इन फिजियोलॉजी डॉक्टर पंजाबराव देशमुख मेडिकल कॉलेज अमरावती तथा एक्स ऑफिसर इन चार्ज स्वस्थ सेवा योजना एंड क्लिनिक डॉक्टर पंजाबराव देशमुख हॉस्पिटल ऑफ रिसर्च सेंटर तथा एक्स टीचर इन स्पोर्ट्स मेडिसिन एम पी एड सेकेंड हनुमान व्यायाम प्रसारक मंडल अमरावती डी सी पी अमरावती 
टीचर इन योगा एंड नेचुरोपैथी श्री हनुमान व्यायाम प्रसारक मंडल डीसीपी अमरावती तथा टीचर इन स्पोर्ट्स मेडिसिन बी एम पी एड सेकेंड संत गाडगे बाबा अमरावती यूनिवर्सिटी अमरावती एक्स वाइस प्रेसिडेंट बृहन महाराष्ट्र योग परिषद तथा एडवाइजरी मेंबर ऑफ अमरावती डिस्ट्रिक्ट योगा एसोसिएशन तो यहाँ तक मैं एक संक्षिप्त स्वरूप में आपका परिचय समाप्त करता हूँ आगे आज के सम्मानीय अतिथि को मैं व्याख्यान के लिए सादर एवं सम्मान से आमंत्रित करता हूँ कि हम सभी जिस व्याख्यान की प्रतीक्षा कर रहे हैं उसका आरंभ हो तो कृपया सर आपके व्याख्यान से हमें उद्घोषित हरिओम सर हरिओम सब लोगों को धन्यवाद आप लोगों को मेरा बायोडेटा देख के ऐसा प्रतीत हुआ होगा कि मैं एलोपैथिक डॉक्टर हो के ये योग के प्रति क्यों इतने साल से काम कर रहे हैं उसके पीछे कारण है कि हमें बुलेट चलाते चलाते एक्सीडेंट हुआ था कॉन्डिलाइटिस लंबा कॉन्डिलाइट हुआ था और उसमें उसके लिए कोई ट्रीटमेंट नहीं थी 1986 में हमने नागपुर अमरावती में और यहाँ तक कि जो पद्मश्री डॉक्टर संजीत जी साहब है उनसे सलाह किया उन्होंने बोला कोई तब सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट नहीं है ना कोई इन्वेस्टिगेशन की जो अभी सुविधा है एम आर और सी स्कैन वो भी नहीं था बाद में है तो हमने फिर उन्होंने हमें बताया कि हमें पूना में कुछ आसनों से उनको भी बैक एक था कुछ आसनों से उनको फायदा हुआ हमें उन्होंने दो चार आसन बताए तब हम एच में स्पोर्ट्स मेडिसिन पढ़ाने आते थे और जो योगा के प्रमुख युवा प्रमुख डॉक्टर अरुण जी खड़ोसकर हमने एक हॉल के उद्घाटन के लिए योगा के प्रसाद के लिए बुलाया और हमने पूछा कि सर ऐसा ऐसा है उन्हें मालूम था कि हम पीठ की दर्द है हम हेल्थ क्लब भी वहाँ था तो वहाँ भी एक पाँच छः महीने से काम कर रहे थे कोई रिलीफ नहीं था तो हमें वो बताया कि भाई कुछ आसन करके आप देखिए तो उन्होंने बोला कि आप तो आप पढ़ाइए यहाँ पे एनाटोमी जोलॉजी हमें रुचि हुई और हमने किया और उसमें बहुत से लाभ मिले और पढ़ते पढ़ते सिखाते सिखाते हमें इसमें ऐसा लगा कि इसमें कुछ फिजियोलॉजी है बॉडी फिजियोलॉजी और हम मेडिकल कॉलेज में थे तो वहाँ पे लाइब्रेरी इंचार्ज थे तो हमने लाइब्रेरी में भी खोजना शुरू किया बहुत से जर्नल में जो मेडिसिन के लैंडसेट और इंटरनेशनल जर्नल थे उसमें कुछ आर्टिकल्स कभी कभी आते हैं एक जर्नल था एनाटॉमी एंड फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ जर्नल इंडिया इंडियन था उसमें एक या दो आर्टिकल हरदम योगा के पैसे थे जहाँ पाण्डिचेरी है या बंगलोर के विवेकानंद केंद्र है तो उसमें कुछ देते थे कि भाई इसमें फिजियोलॉजी है तो इसलिए हमको रुचि लगी और हम ये इस पर लगे हैं अब ये जो हमने टॉपिक लिया है इफेक्ट ऑफ सत्कर्मा ऑन ह्यूमन बॉडी ये इसमें जो को रिलेशन है ये कोई बुक में या कोई साइंटिफिक इसको ऐसा बैकग्राउंड हमने जस्ट उसको को किया है ह्यूमन बॉडी के कुछ सिस्टम से तो इफेक्ट ऑफ सत्कर्म ऑन ह्यूमन बॉडी तो 
it is firstly for doing any yogi practices the will power is must of the person you must be determined mind to do the yogi practices and you must learn the proper technique now the tv channels and books and unqualified yoga teachers are there but proper technique if you don't follow the uh, its uh, side effects are there the and it must practice it is not a to learn the yoga in one day or in one month so it is a practice of sometimes years together so it has got a we know that in shat karma we have got niti trataka kapal bhati woman vasti dhauti nauli uh shank and some people take it as shanka prakshalan also in the yoga they have got an effect on the uh the muscular system they have got an effect on the nervous system uh respiratory system gastrointestinal system and the respiratory system one by one we will follow first we will take jaraniti jaraniti we will take a proper position uh we we will you can we know that jaraniti we have to stand in proper position we have to put the right hand in proper position we have to hold the jala patra with the fingers we have to bend the neck on one side so these are the muscles are involved in this unless you have to practice of asana balancing asana then you can do it jalneti properly the how it is done we all know i want to go to the uh, specific physiological part of it the jalneti the it has got a we know that the function of the jalneti is to the you know, clean the nose and nose has got a, a function of breathing that is taking air in and out and second function is the smell both are important now the nasal cavity is such that its apertures are downward so that the heavier dust particles go down and some particles if it tries to go in there are hairs uh, which obstruct the at the up, uh, entrance of the nostril and then you see the mucous membrane which is covered with the very thick mucous membrane is the thickest mucous membrane secretion in the body it is very difficult to take out we know that in the winter it is very sticky the and the uh, mucous membrane is very vascular it has got a lot of uh, capillary nature we know that within the summer if the temperature more the capillary get break down you get in the bleeding so uh, this is a very vascular structure again they have got a very good uh, nerve endings of the uh, you know, sensory you know, the olfactory you nerve know. the mucous membrane is also present in the sinuses which are present in the maxillary and the mandibular region of the uh, skull uh, which act as a air conditioner the air inside it is made hot or cold according to the season so the ex, uh, more hot air will not enter in the lungs and damage the physiological functions or uh, this cold air will not give the congestion so no so the then the smell is this by the olfactory cranial nerve it is the smallest cranial nerve first cranial nerve uh, the their smell this a uh, that uh, particle are uh, I, I, uh, at the um, in the mucous membrane bending sutra niti is there we know that the sutra we put in the posterior part of the uh, nasal aperture we try to clean it the mucous membrane we block this aperture 
and we train it now we train it with the rubber catheter uh, which cannot scratch but previously used to connect with the grass um, catheter and which uh, which will rub and scratch the uh, and take out the uh, mucus from the so operator is uh, is become patent and the uh, we know that the in our pranayam the we what of the pranayam we do that anugo vilom these operators are those obos the nostrils nostrils must be clear and so that the you can do the to a anugo vilom is if you one nostril is open right nostril we call is a pranayam pranayam that is uh, dominated or sympathetic nervous system is responsible if you do it, we have got a uh, right nostril pranayam if you got a left nostril pranayam uh, is open then we got the parasympathetic nervous system pranayam so this is autonomous system then as this the diagram is there first diagram of a of a cerebrum at the base of the cerebrum you can see the olfactory bulb which has elongated so this elongated bulb so you can continue Elongated bulb. They are the olfactory bulb. Uh, diagram has gone up to the lateral surface of the uh, you know that the shown. There is a ciliary uh, ending. This is not a diagram of the uh, sorry. So lateral part of the nasal cavity is shown. Capillary. And you know, the again in the detail it is shown in the diagrams. Now we we'll come to the Kapalvati. Kapalvati, um, the position is done in the sitting posture. Now this is the position in Kapalvati. Uh, the arms, so the muscles of the back. We have to sit in the Sukhasan or Padmasan, whatever the comfortable asana is there. Then you have to put the, both the arms on the knees, then forward, and you use a stroke. So this is, uh, you contract the muscles of the abdomen and the, the uh, uh, intestine get compressed. So the gases and the fecal matter is uh, pushed forward and forward, so that the it will relieve the gases. It will turn up the smooth muscles of the intestine. Again, due to the strokes, the abdominal muscles, uh, which are uh, important because if they are not uh, contacted or they are not brought into function, then you get a uh, protuberance abdomen. So tone up the muscles so that the protuberance of the abdominals are there. So the uh, you can you will prevent the lumbar spondylitis. That is again a beauty of this kapalvati. Now this Kapalvati is a uh, 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 pushes the uh, intestine upward in the, when you contact the muscles of the abdomen. The abdomen um, diaphragm becomes dome shaped, and as it becomes dome shaped, it will push the alveoli, especially on the lower part of the uh, lung 
and if the air and the uh, dust particles uh, they were thrown away from the bronchial tree or that is a bronchial either bronchial and the bronchial now the body has got a physiological mechanism uh, ciliary what the mechanism that is present bronchioles so what are the foreign bodies the secretions are there this with the ciliary movement they try to bring up so that the secretions come out of the uh, respiratory tract the abdomen must uh, diaphragm is become more dorsal uh, means stretch and the intercostal muscles they also are you know, stretch and um, the air is gone out here the uh, it is uh, respiratory centers they are not active they become silent because it is a voluntary action respiratory centers has got a involuntary of the uh, action of the respiration in the sleep also we get a respiratory uh, centers uh, um, activated that is active process by the respiratory centers they are present in the hypothalamus they are present in medulla oblongata that is apnoeus center pneumothorax center and this um, respiratory tract center so many centers are present uh, five centers see the red is normally 12 to 15 and uh, uh, in the kapalvati it may go to the 60 80 or even in the after the practice it goes to the 120 so they take out the secretions take out the uh, air which was uh, stagnated inside the lower alveolar normal respiration middle part of the lung air alveolar take part in the uh, uh, normal respiration that is what called tidal volume hardly 400 500 ml is the tidal volume lower lung alveolar doesn't take part in the normal respiration so this is the duty of the kapalvati to clean the respiratory tract and it, and it will forcefully uh, force the air through the nostril so the secretion from the nostril also comes out and the air the from the secretion from the sinuses also comes out again it will help to clean the nostril so this is all about a kapalvati now here it is third we take a prataka prataka and in the prataka uh, we have is a very good uh, shuddhi kriya can be done like kapalvati uh, every day you can do it and the beauty of the um, body or nature that it has given more importance to the on the eye it has got four cranial nerves out of 12 cranial nerves the nature has spent four that is optic oculometer trochlear and abducens and all beauty of prataka is these all four cranial nerves are stimulated by prataka so that is the beauty of it first uh, it has got a sensory part the sensory part the we see the object that is a accommodation by the 
axillary muscle, pupillary muscles, and lens curvature uh, in change, and the image we get on the retina. And the retina has got a photosensitivity cells, especially in the optic disc, where the both the images are merged, and this is carried to the uh, by the optic nerve to the uh, into the optic chiasma. What is shown in the diagram, I have optic chiasma, and the 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 occipital lobe of the cerebrum, where this image is uh, printed, it is, uh, and this memory it goes to the memory, and the store in the memory, and whenever you see the same picture, you remind it. So for the visual field, uh, we have got a various uh, uh, you know, nerves, so the oculometer nerve is, supplies all the muscles of the eye, which rotates the eyeball, that is the superior, superior rectus muscle, inferior rectus muscle, then inferior oblique muscle, except superior oblique rectus muscle and lateral rectus muscle. So this also we use it, I have this Tony Urdha Mukha Drishti Prataka. So the superior oblique rectus muscle is there as superior rectus muscle, oculomotor nerve. Here the facial muscle also is uh, uh, involved. So the um, facial muscle, uh, seventh cranial nerve, because we see upward and there is a furrowing of the uh, skin over the forehead. So this we see in the uh, <coughs> then Adhomukha Trasaka inferior oblique rectus and inferior uh, this uh, superior oblique rectus will turn the eyeball downwards and laterally what we call Udhomukha Vistigasma. Nasaka Vistigasma we use the inferior and medial rectus of the right and uh, uh, left eye that is the which is done by the oculometer nerve. So Nasa Gadusti and Bhumadusti we uh, ask to do it for concentration, for meditation, for uh, some other purposes or uh, in the uh, as a Shuddhi Kriya. This uh, Bhumadusti is done by the superior and medial vector. Then the Vama Dhristi turn eye to the left side, uh, which is by the lateral rectus of the left eye, that is done by the abducens gland, and the medial rectus of the right eye by the oculomotor. These are the details of the physiological. To emphasize the, uh, we do the uh, the Dhristi, uh, not just to rotate the eyeball, but we move this, uh, uh, stage these muscles, so the eye movements are there, prevent the refractive error, prevent the skin squint, or the, because the sight is most important for the human being, sight is the most, the eyes are most precious sense organ. So the Sindhrusti, we move the, to the right side, I will to the right side by the lateral rectus of the right eye. Again, the, these are right side abducens nerve, um, cranial nerve, the medial rectus of the left eye, oculometer. So the combination of uh, actions by the cranial nerves and the movement of the eyeball. So we do it steadily and we keep the, um, uh, the movement of the eyeball steady for some time, not like physiotherapy. This also movement they taught in the, or asked to do in the physiotherapy also, but they are quick movements. They ask you to do up, see upward, downward. But 
with must ask as a as a what pattern we must ask to see upward till he can do it till there is no uh, uh, lacrimation more in the eyes or a very uh, unbearable sensation yatha shakti what we call so gradually you increase the time leave jyoti trataka uh, we stay again for the concentration meditation uh, the near object focusing for longer duration so you get the control over the uh, smallest muscle of the fly eyelids what is called levator palpebral superioris which is a part of uh, oculometer nerve so if you control that movement of the muscles so you control the and you say they are the skeletal muscles so if these they are controlled means you are controlling the movements of the skeletal muscles so steadiness of the body sthirata 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 you can get it that is the ultimate is very difficult but still you can do it by trataka so clockwise rotation anti clockwise rotation then here i have shown the uh, sympathetic and passive because the uh, muscles in the cilia or in the pupillary muscles they have got a sympathetic and parasympathetic muscle. the parasympathetic has got a various action on the various organs of the uh, body here i shown the sympathetic the due to the what uh, doing the trataka also we uh, muscles of the face has been drawn and the uh, you get a stretching of the facial nerve or stimulation of the facial nerve in a woman we take the special posture of the body uh, we know everybody the forward bending is the spine cord is uh, forward bending so the spinal cord then put the uh, right hand in proper position the fingers are used to induce the vomiting the, it has got a effect uh, it means the effect on pharynx esophagus stomach uh, and it is the vomiting center vomiting centers are in the middle of the lamina and along with the vomiting center we have got a deglutition center we have got a autonomous nervous system center we have got a respiratory center so all the vital center are present in the middle of lamina along with these all these centers they are near that middle lamina is a very short uh, structure and the centers are so many that you get a thrust center, temperature regulatory center, uh, you get appetite center, sex center, vasomotor center, cardiac center, you all get in the uh, middle of Langita. So indirectly these centers are also stimulated. So, so um, in, inducing the vomiting center are stimulating. the and so the uh, it cleans the mucous membrane of the pharynx or of pharynx so fagus in the stomach it stretches the uh, cardiac sphincter because you are engulfing uh, the water and large amount so the stretch of the stomach is stretched uh, due to the four to five glass of water so this uh, glossopharyngeal nerve is stimulated and again uh, the glossopharyngeal nerve has got got a lot of supply of the parasympathetic nervous system which and uh, this will give the lot of salivation 
salarization secretion is there along with the what we are forming or in with to the woman uh, this uh, salivary secretion itself gives a parasympathetic stimulation which gives a comfort to the person then the the uh, you cannot induce vomiting then we 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 put the danda roti a uh, danda we put inside uh, the of uh, of uh, pharynx or of pharynx and we take out the water so the along with the mucus membrane phlegma is clean out it comes out and the uh, the uh, stomach is of agar is just the oropharynx uh, they stretch in the vastra dhoti uh, which bit a uh, cloth uh, soak in the water and uh, try to dilute it so that the it cleans the uh, tongue it cleans the oropharynx it cleans the very um esophagus and it cleans the mucus membrane of the stomach and it just rub it so rubbing again we take out the mucus or phlegma which was adherent which is taken out as we engulf the whole sphinx we uh, ask to do the nodi kriya rotate the uh, rectus muscle so it presses the uh, distended stomach and it will rub it so for clockwise rotation of the rectus muscle and the clockwise muscle uh, rectus muscle it will clean the muscles as mucus membrane of the stomach this is duty of the vastra ruti and gradually we to we take out uh, the vastra so again here deglutition process a deglutition center is there in the medulla oblongata which is uh, a near by so many vital center now the they are called the vital center because the person has got the respiration and the heart rate then we can say, say that the person is alive otherwise he is dead though the facial senses are not there though he cannot stand move the limbs Move the arms. Still, we say that he is alive. So that's why these centers are present. So most they are present in middle of the neck, nearby to each other, and nearby there is also an autonomic nervous system center, uh, which is has got a sympathetic and parasympathetic. Uh, for the uh, the centers. the the they are stimulated parasympathetic you the uh, what we call it uh, you get a pleasant sensation or a very happy uh, sensation and the sympathetic i have no on the contrary has got the effect on mind so uh, vagus nerve is most important for the respiratory system which is start from the uh, uh, neck uh, it has got supply of the, uh, the respiratory system also 
So the Broncos becomes narrowed as we have seen the Kapalvati. Here also the Rajasnar is similar. In a Vastra Dhoti, Danda Dhoti, Oman, the Rajasnar is stimulated and this Rajasnar supplies up to the uh, this large intestine and it is the longest and most important nerve. And this along with this nerve, you have got a sympathetic fiber. Parasympathetic fibers are only present in the neck and the sacral region of the uh, body. We'll see it later on in the basti. Basti is again, that, um, yeah, uh, before Basti, I will tell you about the, um, this, um, what we call it, the, um, the, um, woman and Danda Dhoti or Vastra Dhoti. Uh, this Kriya, a woman has been tried in the Ayurvedic by some drugs. Uh, maybe it has been taken from the Yogi Kriya, that's all. Because, uh, and then the in allopathy, uh, as a, a cleaning the stomach or taking the gastric juice. We use as a, by the gastric tube, we put a gastric tube, a uh, gastric lavage is done. Uh, with the bigger tube, we, we do the gastric lavage in the poisoning cases. These all methods of the yoga has been taken by the other patches also uh, for the benefit, benefit of the human beings. So they are for the benefit of the human being, for the uh, cleaning the body from inside. Uh, the basti uh, with voluntary control of the uh, washing technique is there. Uh, so the there is a full control over the functions the large intestine, some part of the lymph is also wash away, uh, rectum, external and internal sphincters of the anal canal. Now, the, when the water enters, it stretches the internal sphincter and external sphincter of the anal canal. It stretches the muscles of the rectum and the lower part of the, uh, the colon also. So the stretching uh, is done by the large amount of water. The basti used to take uh, ideally uh, doing the uh, what we call it relaxing the mula vanda so that external sphincter is relaxed. Udyan vanda is applied and the, the Nauli is done. So the negative pressure is created in the rectal region, anal canal. So without any application or any instrument, the water is sucking and to wash the colon, wash the rectum, wash the anal canal. So, <clears throat> uh, as we clean our mouth uh, in the morning, this is the method to wash this thing. Then some uh, person or yogi, they do the basti by putting a rubber tube in the anal region and again they perform uh, this what we call Udiyan Bandar. Now the Kriya, negative pressure is created 
and they suck the water. The, still, this cannot be practiced by uh, everybody hardly, it is too much practice. So we use the enema pot uh, for the bursti and purpose is to clean all these things. The, after bursti, the muscles become stronger, uh, sphincters become stronger, so there is no leaking of fecal matter. Uh, because in the latter age, the this filter becomes weak and there is a leaking of the fecal matter. Even the, due to the uh, more pressure over the veins, varicose veins develop, we can prevent as varicose veins. Due to the constipation, as the muscle are not uh, uh, has not what uh, uh, elastic move muscles of the rectum or the colon, the peristaltic movements are weak. So and the constipation is there, and hard stool there will be the fissure in the uh, anal canal. Again, that is a problem. So this can be prevented by the bursti. In Ayurvedic, the, um, this uh, method, they use it as a treatment of bursties of various uh, drugs also, or various uh, drugs, or bhasma, or oil also. So various oil types of oil, uh, they use as a therapy. In all these, uh, um, Shuddhi Kriya has got a therapeutic value also and uh, if the person has got uh, prevent the illness, uh, preventive value also, if you uh, do it, you can prevent this, uh, um, um, this is problems or diseases of so many uh, uh, systems and they are the very important system of the body. Muscles, uh, especially the smooth muscles, because the asana doesn't act on the smooth muscles. But this uh, Shuddhi Kriya, they have got a mostly effect on the uh, smooth muscles of the body. And uh, the, the therapeutic value. Even after you got a, you have got a, some problems of the uh, digestive system, respiratory system, you can minimize it. It can be the, uh, it will help to the treatment of any pathology. You take biology, IV treatment, it will help to that pathy to, or you will require uh, this, uh, your agony will be lessened by doing this uh, various shasti kriya. The, uh, this, uh, I assume the diagram, the parasympathetic nerve, uh, sympathetic nerve. But the mula vanda, what we say that the uh, and the sphincter, contraction of the mulvan, uh, the sphincter is a sympathetic sensation. While uh, the contraction of the sphincter is a you know, mulavanda, and uh, relaxation is a parasympathetic nervous system, a parasympathetic. So, you uh, uh, hold the uh, duplication process. Uh, your sympathetic stimulation is more. You you are uh, you become angry or your mood as uh, is a uh, mental uh, irritation is there. But if you are the parasympathetic stimulation, uh, relaxing the sphincters by complete defecation, uh, you get a very pleasant 
and very comfortable sensation. Uh, that is what the mool of that that is Mulada chakra is there. So all the chakras they start from the Mulada. So the Kundalini Yoga is there. So the last one is the uh, to I will tell about the Shankar Prakshalan. Shankar Prakshalan uh, people don't take it as a uh, Shuddhi Kriya, but uh, it is a very good uh, cleaning process of the GI system uh, and the very simple. Simple, but again, the it is done once in the year or like, but under the supervision of uh, the old well trained yoga teacher. And this is three person uh, the person who is uh, having some element, uh, some disease, uh, he may not ask to do the uh, Sankha Prashtalam. That is a Again, Ardha uh, Sankha Prakshalam sometimes, then Purna Sankha Prakshalam. Ardha Sankha Prakshalam is done for some hours. The Sankha Prakshalam, you drink the water, you uh, pour water uh, on the morning on empty stomach, doing some posters or asana and go to the defecation, the uh, water comes, the uh, water is the defecation is there. Initially it is a, it's a fecal matter, after that it is a color fluid and in washing the mucous membrane. Uh, say the, they wash from the mucous membrane from the mouth to the animal. So every part of the intestine, woman, dandadoti, hardly we do the up to the stomach. We cannot, uh, there is no, uh, this uh, shiddhikriya for the small intestine uh, or upper part of the large intestine. That is a transverse colon, descending colon, uh, and the ascending colon. But here, if there is a discrea, we'll clean the mucous membrane of the intestine, large intestine, and here water comes out. So the, uh, in the small intestine, uh, is a very large intestine, uh, long intestine, we know about 20 feet, you can say. If it is a very important structure of the body because it has got a very strong digestive juices. All the, it can digest protein, fat, carbohydrates. Other organs cannot digest so many. Stomach, we can digest protein on that. In duodenum, we have got a digestion of carbohydrate, protein also, fat partially. But intestine can digest any type of protein, non, not only digestion, but absorption also, and absorption surface is so much that you don't waste any particle of the food. The food is the most important part of the life. If you don't have what to eat food, we have done nothing in the life. So these food particles, every Article of the food is digested and required amount of uh, digested food is absorbed. Required amount of water is absorbed. Right? Required amount of salt is absorbed by the small intestine. The excess of the water um, salt again they are absorbed by the large intestine and the concentrated. Fecal matter is produced, which is of no use. So fecal matter will take out by the skin. But what about the intestine? 
So there is no uh, kriya, but the Sangha Prakshtana has got a capacity. And if you can, a person can do it, it's the best thing of which you can clean yourself or, but it should be done not uh, individually, but with the guidance or with the uh, advice or under the supervision of expert a yoga teacher has got a lot of experience about the Shankar Prakshana. So, and with the consent of, I will say that you did take the consent to, from the physician yourself, your physician. Uh, and you, you explain that physician what you are going to do. So, the Shankar Prakshalan uh, is a very important and uh, people do it uh, in the, uh, sometimes uh, in the year, once in a year. This is all about the Siddhi Kriya. Adiyo. हरि ओम सर बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद सर जी जो आपने इतना बहुमूल्य मार्गदर्शन हमें दिया है सबसे पहले योगिक प्रक्रियाओं में शुद्धि क्रिया का महत्व हमारे ग्रंथों में वर्णित किया गया है और षटकर्म या शुद्धि क्रियाएं ही चित्त को शुद्ध करने के लिए संपूर्ण शरीर जैसे शुद्ध होता है वैसे ही चित्त की शुद्धता बढ़ती है तो चित्त की शुद्धि के लिए जो षटकर्म शारीरिक शुद्धि के साथ-साथ सम्मिलित है और यह वैज्ञानिक दृष्टि से कैसे महत्वपूर्ण है यह आपने काफी अच्छे यो उत्कृष्ट पद्धति से हमें समझाया और यह अमूल्य ज्ञान हमें प्रदान किया इसके लिए आपका बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद आगे का जो आभार प्रदर्शन है इसकी जिम्मेदारी मैं सहायक प्राध्यापिका अर्चना देशपांडे मैडम को मैडम की ओर देता हूं कि वह आकर यहां पर आभार प्रदर्शन करें हरिओम सभी को मेरा आदरपूर्वक नमस्ते मैं अर्चना देश पांडे धन्यवाद प्रस्ताव के लिए यहां उपस्थित हूं इस यादगार अवसर पर धन्यवाद देने का मौका पाकर मैं अपने आप को सम्मानित महसूस करती हूं श्री हनुमान व्यायाम प्रसारक मंडल द्वारा संचालित डिग्री कॉलेज ऑफ फिजिकल एजुकेशन योग विभाग द्वारा और इस संस्था के प्रधान सचिव पद्मश्री श्री प्रभाकर राव जी वैद्य इनके मार्गदर्शन में यह आचार्य त्रंबक गुरुजी जोशी एवं डॉक्टर एन वी कारबेलकर इनकी स्मृति में इंटरनेशनल फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम का आयोजन किया है आज के तीसरे दिन के दूसरे सत्र में पिछले एक घंटे से हम सभी ज्ञानधारक के रूप में यहां जुड़े हैं इसका कारण हमारे अतिथि के प्रभावशाली भाषण ने हमें प्रेरित किया है आदरणीय डॉक्टर प्रफुल्ल रोंगे सर आपका हृदय से आभार व्यक्त करती हूं मैं महोदय के बारे में बताना चाहती हूं कि सर आप समय-समय पर हमारे योग विभाग को अपनी सेवाएं प्रदान करते रहते हैं महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभाते हैं मैं अपनी समस्त महाविद्यालयीन परिवार की ओर से आपका धन्य व्यक्त आपका धन्यवाद व्यक्त करना चाहती ऐसे प्रतिभा संपन्न अतिथि को आमंत्रित करके जिन्होंने हमें अवसर प्रदान किया मैं उनका भी आभार व्यक्त करती हूं हमारे महाविद्यालयीन सदस्य ने अपना उचित योगदान दिया उन सभी सदस्यों का धन्यवाद इस फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम में जुड़े सभी पार्टिसिपेंट जो हमें ऊर्जा देते हैं इनका भी मन से आभार व्यक्त करती हूं कल के कार्यक्रम के लिए ऐसा ही सहकार्य रहेगा इसी अपेक्षा के साथ हम शांति पाठ की ओर बढ़ते हैं आंखें बंद शांति पाठ के लिए तैयार ओम सर्वे भवंतु सुखिना 
सर्वे सन्तु निरामय सर्वे भद्रा पश्यंत मचिद दुख भाग भवे ओम शांति 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 अध्यक्षता की अनुमति से कार्यक्रम का समापन होने जा रहा है धन्यवाद